Minis Forum M1 Pro, a tiny aluminium cube, but it's got the right parts, Intel Core Ultra, Arc graphics, Oculink for eGPU expansion. So let's see if it's actually worth your money. But first, unboxing. The box is simple, eco-friendly, nothing fancy. And inside we got leaflets nobody ever reads, the PC wrapped in what I can only describe as a paper burrito, a 125 watts power brick, a power cable, a vessel mount with a couple of screws, and an Oculink adapter we'll test later. The M1 Pro itself is pretty compact, 12 by 12 by 5 centimeters and around 600 grams. Aluminium body looks a bit like Mac Mini and greater style side vents. Feels premium in hand. Flip it over though and the budget reality shows the plastic bottom flexes under pressure. But still, it looks more premium than the lower tier of Minis Forum mid-range mini PCs, the UM750L Slim, which I will show you in the next video. So at the front we got two USB 3.2 Gen 2, a USB 4 with power delivery and a headphone jack. At the back we got 2.4G LAN, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.1 and another USB 4. And because nostalgia is apparently mandatory, there's a USB 2 like it's 2005 all over again. But hey, it's perfect for wired mouse or keyboard so no complaints. Both USB 4 ports push 40 gigabits per second, carry video and handle power. Multi-monitor support it's up to 4 4K panels or even a single 8K 60Hz. Wireless, Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. The axis is pretty easy. Unscrew the four Phillips screws, lift the bottom but just be careful with the ribbon cables. And inside you get two sodium slots up to 120 gigs DDR5, two M2 PCIe 4.0 slots each up to 4TB RAID and one Oculink slot, but using it means losing an M2 slot. Mine came with 32 gigs dual channel RAM and a 1TB Gen4 SSD, hitting around 5GB per second read and write. The BIOS has all the good stuff, fan curves, power limits, VRAM allocation, wake up LAN, etc etc. Many speakers and a microphone are built in in this box. They obviously won't replace your hi-fi, but for quick setup checks or Teams call, they do the trick. After that, it's headset or wireless. Don't pretend you'll enjoy movie on these. Inside, you've got Intel Core Ultra 5, 14 cores, 18 threads, paired with Arc graphics and a new MPU. Specs sound good, but how does it feel? The Geekbench came in just over 11,000 multicore. Sign bench about 11.5. That's a laptop class performance in something that literally fits in your hand. Day to day, it's quick. Multiple monitors, Chrome tabs, Office apps, even heavy software. The CPU pulls its weight. The integrated GPU, well, it reminds you this isn't a gaming rig. But where it surprises is cooling. Dual fans, copper heat pipes, and face change pads keep it whisper quiet. Idle, you can't even hear it. And under load, it's still library quiet. After half an hour of sign bench, the temps held mid 70s to mid 80s Celsius cooler and quieter than most mini PCs I've tested. And on the thermal camera, the hot air coming out of the vent sits around 45 to 50 Celsius in normal use. Under stress, the surface hits about 40 to 45 Celsius, noticeable but never annoying. So yeah, the performance is strong, but the thermals are what really sets this apart. That cooling headroom pays off once you step into creative work. DaVinci Resolve runs smoothly. Timeline scrubbing, layers, grading, filters, etc. etc. The integrated GPU won't crush 3D work, but for video editing, it's absolutely fine. The real trick is the NPU. It doesn't render, but it does take over AI tasks like scene detection, smart reframing, audio cleanup, and that frees up the CPU and GPU to focus on the heavy lifting. The workload feels lighter, faster and less laggy, and the fact that you're getting that on a 500 box mini PC, that's pretty impressive. Now, let's be real, if you're buying this purely as a gaming PC out of the box, you'll be disappointed. Classic emulators, smooth as butter, nostalgia guarantee, but 
you want to push some proper titles at 1080p or 2K well. Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p low, we got around 30 to 40 FPS. Playable, but not really enjoyable. Then I plugged an eGPU and the whole story flipped. Most mini PCs in this price range rely on USB 4 or Thunderbolt for external GPUs. It works, but there's always a bottleneck and this one, it has a secret weapon, Oculink. That's a direct line to the GPU, no bottlenecks, no compromises. And I hooked it up to a Radeon RX 9060 XT using the Minisforum DG1 dock. By the way, I'll have a separate deep dive on that dock, so it's definitely worth checking out. Plug in Oculink, restart, disable the integrated Arc GPU, and boom, the benchmarks shot through the roof. In Geekbench GPU, from just over 32,000 on the iGPU to 82,000 with the Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 9060 XT. And a Forza Horizon 5 from 30 FPS at 1080p low, we've seen with the integrated GPU now to 170 FPS at 2K Ultra. Grand Theft Auto 5 Enhanced Edition, a cool 200 FPS, maxed out. Basically, the game is begging for mercy. A game you can actually enjoy without wanting to throw your keyboard out the window. So then, just for fun, I swapped in an NVIDIA ASUS RTX 5070. That's when things went from impressive to ridiculous. Geekbench GPU jumped again, nearly 190,000. So Forza Horizon 200 FPS at 2K Ultra. Grand Theft Auto 5 almost 350 FPS. Smooth, seamless, no stutter, like playing on a full gaming rig. And that's the key point here. On its own, the M1 Pro is a light gaming box, but Pair it with the right GPU of Oculink and suddenly it's punching at full tower levels. So now the verdict, can this be your daily driver? The M1 Pro is one of those rare mini PCs that actually delivers on both fronts, power and flexibility. At around 500 bucks, it's not fighting the 300 box office boxes, but its real rival is the Apple Mac Mini. And here's the thing, Apple charges you more, locks down the upgrades and forget about eGPU expandability. This little aluminium brick, it gives you some options. Upgradable RAM, swap in bigger SSDs, even strap on a desktop GPU with Oculink and watch it transform. So who is it for? I would say professionals who want a compact but serious workstation, creators juggling 4K displays or light to mid editing, gamers who are willing to add some eGPU and maybe tinkerers who love modular builds. Definitely this is not for hardcore gamers expecting AAA performance without the eGPU and obviously it's not for bargain hunters who just need a web and word box. Now the weak spots, a lone USB 2.0. It's fine for mouse or dongle, and using Oculink means you're giving up one M2 slot. Hardly deal breakers. And that's the punchline. On its own, the M1 Pro is a solid daily driver. Hook up an external eGPU, and suddenly you're running Forza at 250 FPS in 2K, like you're on a full gaming rig. So for $500 US, this is the most versatile mini PC I've tested so far. No compromise, a real tool that scales with you. Agree, disagree, drop your hot takes in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. I know you want to. Family Pop TV.